territories in the Pacific. I'm JN Squire and I'm a French uh, Wikimedian and member of Wikimedia France and contributor to the Wikipedia in French since 2009 and also Wikidata in Commons. Um, so we'll see on the, on the next slide, please. Uh, first, what are the French Pacific Islands? And on the next slide, we, we begin to see some quick facts about them. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, nope, you're supposed to show maps. I think it's an old version you got. You might have to reload uh, the slides. Uh, yes, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, um. uh, this, this, um, uh. So screen sharing, screen sharing. Uh, uh, yes, Clipperton Island. Yes, this is correct. Um, so yes, first Clipperton Island is uh, the first and we'll never talk more about it. It's and habitated, uh, there is no one living there, it's tiny, and uh, so it's out of the scope of uh, this session. So next uh, slide, we are going to see where is New Caledonia. New Caledonia is a um, collectivity, a little special with um, uh, three provinces and then communes, communes, municipalities below uh, them. And then on the next slide, we will uh, see about French Polynesia. With it also has an organization with um, communes and nothing between uh, the name of the collectivity and this. And on the next slide, uh, we also see about Wallis and Futuna, which are very special because it's the only place in France when you will have kingdoms uh, with uh, elect kings uh, ruling for the customs of uh, the people living there. And uh, then let's move on to more facts on the next slide uh, with quick facts. So first, for history, um, what you saw are the remains of the former Second French Colonial Empire. Uh, it was colonized during the 1800s uh, to secure them away from European powers and also to harvest uh, things like uh, guano and nickel. Um, uh, instant French citizenship got granted for Polynesian from uh, treaties, and it was after World War II to the other uh, collectivities. Uh, there are some independence movements in New Caledonia and French Polynesia, or who they kind of might have, uh, they haven't succeeded yet. Um, um, more on geography speaking, uh, there are three types of islands, volcanic and coral, which is usual and also continental. 
uh, with a uh, Grand Terre, which is an island, and it's part of a continent named Zealandia, and it's also um, attached to New Zealand. Um, there are a lot of coral reefs. Uh, New Caledonia borders the second biggest coral barrier in the world. It's a class, uh, protected uh, under UNESCO. Um, there are various kinds of administrative subdivisions I have we have seen already. Uh, climates are ranging from equatorial to tropical, with some dry, some humid, and too temperate too. And on the next slide, we also see about on the next slide. Yes, people. Uh, so yeah, there are native peoples like Kanaks in New Caledonia, uh, uh, Polynesians, Wallisian, uh, people from many immigration waves from Europe, uh, Asia, Wallis, uh, internal migration between the collectivities, Polynesian too. Um, there are many different languages and cultures, uh, some are, are threatened. Uh, in economy, it's mostly still extractive, um, kind of like during the colony, uh, like in, with nickel in New Caledonia, pearls in Polynesia, fishing. Uh, there are biologies transfers from European, European mainland and new uh, development funds. They are developing tourism. Uh, the wealth, there is a welfare structure copying part of the French main, uh, mainland, and there are, high, there are levels of unemployment. Then on the next slide, we'll see about the state of knowledge on Wikimedia projects, uh, and we'll jump on to the next slide. Thank you. So you can see here a, a commune, a municipality uh, named Farino, and uh, it's located in New Caledonia, and you can see already uh, in the tab table of contents, there are some issues, uh, some like uh, some kind of content for about uh, everything that is on the main road. Uh, and also you can see there, but the article is very short on many, essential uh, topics. And on the next slide, we'll see a little more of this. So there are threats to knowledge in the Pacific Islands. And there are, the digitized sources are rare or difficult to find without a knowledge or uh, local context or the right academic publications. Um, European cent there are European centric views. Uh, so, uh, for example, some digitized resources are from colonial times and promote uh, dated views. There are there is recent content located on more specific portals through paywalls or paper only. Uh, there are dated information on our analysis. Same issue with digitized sources. Uh, is rusty historical and current settlement sites mostly you look at, are mostly located near the sea and are threatened by global climate change. Um, uh, they are threatened native and current cultures and, and uh, local biodiversity to unique spaces. Uh, on the next slide, we see also contribution issues with the diced distance. Uh, thousands of kilometers away from the mainland, there is sea between islands and sometimes hundreds of kilometers. Um, uh, it takes more travel time uh, from the, the mainland. Uh, it takes uh, 10 plus hour flights with at least one connection in Asia or Americas. There are um, physical geographic accessibility issues too. Some places are accessible only through boats. Um, and money uh, is, is costlier too with thousands of euros for travel and accommodation to deliver workshops there. Uh, there is logistic needed uh, with PCs, smartphones to take pictures, sound, internet access, libraries with local reliable sources to site too. And on the next slide, we can see uh, population density issues too with like an inhabitant on some islands. Uh, like uh, everything is uh, located in administrative capitals uh, and the rest is kind of less developed. Uh, there are inhabited islands such as 
Clipperton, of course, and also uh, archipelagos, islands such as Tuvalu, uh, a lot of uh, the islands, access, and you can access only them through expeditions and sometimes uh, thanks to the French army. Uh, also, you have lake structures uh, like uh, Glams. And on the next slide, we'll see a different kind of database because semi-autonomous territories got their own local databases with more detail than the national one. For example, for law, we got Legifrance, Joydoc, and Lexpol. For statistics, we got INSEE, and under INSEE are uh, with uh, an EC and EISPF for and for local heritage, it depends on how rich the local entities are. Some got their own website, and, and for others, you need to parse the local bills and decrease for the rest. And on the next slide, we see what initiative we can take. Uh, uh, and at first, on the next slide, in European France. Uh, where it's cheap and fast uh, to infuse it from the already existing volunteers from the mainland, uh, but uh, he has a more limited range and impact. Uh, we can do something in person, like in Paris with the Delegation de la Prolinisie Française and in La Maison de la Nouvelle Calédonie. Um, there are remote training and workshops possible uh, too, and improving wiki projects page presentations and listing useful resources there. And uh, you can see what look, uh, the Maison de la Nouvelle Calédonie, House of New Caledonia, looks like uh, on this slide, on the next slide. And on the next slide, you can see uh, their uh, library with some very useful documentation there and sources for, for example, Wikipedia. Uh, next on place, uh, there is a wide range and impact, but slower and slower and costlier. Uh, the solution we could partner with big local organizations so such universities and uh, l'Académie des Langues Canac, uh, Canac Languages. Academy, uh, partnering with structure uh, in Europe too. For example, well, Maison de la Nouvelle Calédonie, uh, there are links with people going from uh, mainland France to uh, New Caledonia. That's why. In person training and workshops uh, with as much uh, glams on Wikipedia as possible. Uh, as possible on Wikipedia, Commons, Wiktionary, etc. Uh, more we, we can do more Wikimedia advocacy to local actors and develop local Wikimedia user groups for a better autonomy there, uh, so they can keep to meet each other there. Um, that's all. Do you have questions? We have ideas, and thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you. Anyone? Well, my question would possibly be um, what the organization is doing for the local languages in these um, communities abroad. I mean, there's obviously not only French being spoken, but you also mentioned some other languages. What is your organization doing to support these um, other language communities that exist overseas? Uh, well, current, uh, currently there are things uh, being done in uh, French Guiana, in so Southern America, uh, with uh, so there are French co communities, there are Creole communities there too, and I don't have the detail about uh, the natives. Uh, you, I think we have to ask uh, Wikimedia France directly about this. And for uh, the rest, currently there has been nothing done yet for the Pacific uh, because I've already uh, reached uh, the Maison de la Nouvelle Calédonie in Paris, but unfortunately their director uh, died recently, so they were going through uh, reorganization. And I'm going to send uh, emails uh, to do remote workshops uh, and physical ones 
uh, in New Caledonia. So there are uh, groups of editors in uh, the Pacific, of, in French Pacific? Do you Currently, have contact? Uh, it, nothing organized, uh, maybe some people there and there sometime, but currently none. So there is a need to do something from uh, the mainland, maybe. So there are questions? There are three minutes left. I believe there is no other uh, more questions. One last question? No. Thank you very much. Thank you for your session. And uh, You're welcome. wishing you a lovely day. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.